Our scripture this morning comes from Psalm 69, verses 8 through 16. Listen for the story. The disciples are amazed, the scripture says, because they see Jesus' zeal for the creation of justice in the temple that day. It recalls to their minds the passage from the Psalms, the hymn of the temple that describes the hatred that they fear could overcome Jesus, and them as well, as a result of this moment of righteous anger. I have become a stranger to my own brothers, an immigrant to my mother's children, because passion from, for your house has consumed me. The insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. I wept while I fasted. Even for that, I was insulted. When I wore funeral clothes, people made fun of me. Those who sit at the city gate muttered things about me. Drunkards made up rude songs. But me? My prayer reaches you, Lord, at just the right time. God, in your great and faithful love, answer me with your certain salvation. Save me from the mud. Don't let me drown. Let me be saved from those who hate me and from those watery depths. Don't let me be swept away by the floodwaters. Don't let the abyss swallow me up. Don't let the pit close its mouth over me. Answer me, O Lord, for your faithful love is good. Turn to me in your great compassion. Ancient words for a present day. you belong not just looking on for this is your story enter the story enter enter the passion enter the place we belong not just looking on, for this is our passion. Enter the passion, enter the story, enter the passion, enter his passion. The story of Jesus turning over the tables in the temple are told in all four of our Gospels. And I'd like to just start by reading from the Gospel of Mark on his version of what happened in that temple on that day. Then they came to Jerusalem and he entered the temple and began to drive out those who were selling and those who were buying in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he would not allow anyone to carry anything through the temple. He was teaching and saying, is it not written my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it into a den of thieves. And when the chief priests and the scribes heard it, they kept looking for a way to kill him, for they were afraid of him, because the whole crowd was spellbound by his teaching. This is where folks begin to ask, Jesus isn't supposed to be angry. He's not supposed to be violent. He's not supposed to turn over the tables. It just simply doesn't fit in how we understand our Jesus. 
we like to think of Jesus as the Lamb of God. This image is comforting, but if it's all he is, then it's also complacent. And when we dig deep into the stories of Jesus, into the thought of Lamb of God, he was not at all complacent. But in fact, he was what the high priests and scribes called him. He was a rebel rouser. Now, prophets challenge the status quo. They don't look into a crystal ball to see the future. They observe the world around them, and they deduce, if we continue to behave this way, then this is going to happen. So an example would be of a contemporary person doing just that who behaved like a prophet of old, would be Al Gore. Now I say Al Gore because he had produced a documentary called An Inconvenient Truth. Perhaps you remember the documentary An Inconvenient Truth. There was a lot of uprising after that documentary. But if you remember the story, you'll remember that the documentary lays out the truth about climate change, the truth that is actually happening right now. And so a truth that is quite inconvenient to the rich and the powerful is also somewhat inconvenient for you and I. So if we act to address climate change, then we challenge. We challenge the oil companies and the way we run factories and the way we discard our stuff. Changing our ways is a challenge for all of us. We get into a way of living, right? We get into a way of living, but it's wasteful. But it's our way of living, so we're really not interested in change. Because really, who among us would prefer to ride their bike other than David Law? Who would prefer to ride your bike to church rather than get into a car that's just more convenient? If we act, to address climate change, then we do challenge the oil companies. We do challenge the rich and the powerful, but we also challenge our own way of life. So Jesus' anger was righteous. Throughout his ministry, Jesus continued to share this inconvenient truth that we are all going to destroy ourselves if we don't change our ways. And his message was always the same, repent, repent. Basically what he's saying is stop it. So as I shared last, last week, the most effective way of teaching is by demonstration is by example. And so Jesus was demonstrating this very inconvenient truth that the system had established and maintained by the Jewish leaders and the Roman rulers. And it was in direct contradiction to the teachings of God. In fact, Jewish people were considered the chosen people. And they were chosen to share 
what the kingdom of God was all about. They were chosen to lead the world in worshiping God and living as God's child. But the Jewish people, the Jewish leaders, taught a, they just did a really lousy job at being the chosen people who would teach all nations about God. And they clearly, clearly even in the temple, put man's laws, which created bondage, creates bondage, before the laws of God, which creates liberation. So Jesus was angry, and righteously so. He wasn't angry, by the way, at an individual. He wasn't out to seek revenge for Pilate and Herod. He wasn't after one guy or two guys. He was angry at the entire system that perpetuated this injustice rather than justice. And so we use the word systemic. What we mean when we say systemic is we are referring to the whole system, the whole system, the whole machine that creates an outcome. Systemic racism, for example, is not about the racist. It is about the system in place that allows the racist to behave. Movements like the civil rights. Movements like the civil rights were not addressing the bus driver that told Rosa Parks that she couldn't stand any longer. The movement was not about the bus driver. The movement was about the ability for the bus driver to tell another person where to sit. If Martin Luther King simply addressed the bus driver, there would be no movement. Because the problem isn't the bus driver. The problem is the attitude that keeps white people in power, and dare I say, still does. The system was part of oppressing the people in Jesus' time, because the operating system at that time, the rich and powerful became more rich and powerful, and the poor and the outcast became more oppressed. This is not the way of my father. Jesus would teach. He turned over the tables. And it probably, by the way, was just a few tables, because there probably were hundreds of tables before the temple. But he just turned over a few as a symbol. It's kind of like if a prophet goes into the Vancouver Mall and takes some spray paint and spray paints repent over three or four stores, it's a symbol to all the other stores. It is a message that our system contributes to consumerism. So what did this symbolic gesture of turning over the tables do? He challenged the practices of the Jewish leaders and Roman leaders, pointing out to the leaders and the people, this is God's house and should be treated as such. Where is your attitude of reverence for the most holy? The temple was exemplifying man's kingdom. 
rather than God's kingdom. And he was mad. We have all types of systems in place. We ask you all, ourselves included, the worship team asks you all, to enter into the story. You are not spectators. The story continues and continues and continues. It is not a story that happens once 2,000 years ago. And so we have these systems in place that are far, far, far away from establishing God's kingdom here on earth. If we experience anger toward those dominating systems, if we feel that way, then our anger, in my opinion, is righteous. Righteous anger is not complacent. Righteous anger drives us to action. In Mary, Mary's Magnificat that she sings when she's with Elizabeth and she's carrying Jesus, she sings this. He shows strength with his arm. He scatters the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He brings down the powerful from their thrones and lifts up the lowly. He fills the hungry with good things and sends the rich away empty. She knew. She knew that it was the system that created injustice throughout the world. And she knew that the God child she carried was going to address those systems. This is your turn to participate. We, too, have systems in place. These systems perpetuate injustice in our world right now. We, what I want to know, what are those systems in our world right now? What are the systems where Jesus would have righteous anger. I'll tell you a trick as to how to name that system. Think about a person who is oppressed in some way, who is um, pushed down, who is an outcast. And when you have that person in your mind, this is what you ask yourself. What is the system that makes that so. Okay, you all got that? Think of a person who is lowly as Mary sings and ask yourself, what is the system that keeps that person lowly? Now is your time to participate. Don't be shy. Aaron. Okay. The government creating laws that are affecting the trans population. These are government laws, top down. The system is breaking someone. I don't have my glasses on. Nancy? How about the healthcare system? The healthcare system. The system maybe of pharmaceutical industries. The system makes it impossible for so many people to, for example, get insulin for their children. The system. The David? The social and economic system. What is keeping poor people poor? Why? are poor people poor when the world is filled with enough resources where every single human being has enough food. The system 
Leah. Attempts to limit voting rights. Why? Because the powerful won't get their power if they allow the people to speak. The system of the powerful. Jim. The poor mental health system. The system that won't acknowledge that mental health is legitimate. The system that will not um, offer enough insurance to cover what is needed for those people who suffer so greatly. The system is in place to keep those people who have a mental illness from uh, from uh, an ability to deal with their illness, the system. Joanne. The criminal justice system. The system jails far more African Americans than white people. Why? Are African Americans more prone to violence? No. I will tell you this that if you are an African American and you are caught with a small amount of marijuana in a state that, where it's not legal, they are far more likely to go to jail than a white person who is carrying the same amount. Why? It's the system. People don't want to change. People don't want to give up their power. Another, Sarah. The banking system. Ugh. <laughs> the banking system is out to get the little guy. Do you know how impossible it would be for Ken and I to buy a house? We've been in parsonages for 17 years. What bank is going to offer us a loan at a decent interest rate? rather than 12%. The system is out to get richer and richer, the powerful more and more powerful. Okay, have fun with this. The education system. Yeah. The education system. I don't get it. The children are our future. Yet we do not invest in our future. We, oh, I was so mad. <laughs> when I was a teacher, I had a roommate who was a, um, a dental hygienist, and she got paid so much more than I did. My starting salary as a teacher in the early 90s was about 22000 Her starting salary was 35000 the system is more interested in clean teeth than our children who are the leaders of our future. Why? I don't get that one. I can't tell you why. But there's something about the system that Jesus would be really mad about. Another, any more? Diane. The houseless people Notice we do not say homeless anymore, because home is where the heart is, right? I mean, we can call any place home where there's love. And quite frankly, I know people who are a part of those homeless communities where they do have love from the community of other homeless people. So we say houseless now, because they don't have a house. Why? Why are we so afraid of the houseless? Why are we so unwilling to make sure that everyone has a roof over their head? It's a basic right. The system. What else? Energy companies. What's that? The gas and oil energy The gas, oh gosh. The gas and oil companies. Really? Is it really necessary to charge $4.50 for a gallon of gas? Who's profiting? 
It's not the people where they are fairly charged. It's the oil companies because they want to continue that profit margin. If they didn't care so much about the profit margin, we would be paying a fair price. The system. I thought no one would say anything. And so I had to prime the pump and I wanted to say the system of the police department allows the man who killed and murdered George Floyd to be acceptable. Why did he do that? He had no thoughts that he would pay any consequences. If he thought there was a consequence, he would not be kneeling on the back of George Floyd. The system of police culture needs to be addressed, but it's not. Why? Why? I will tell you because racism still exists in deep, dark ways. These are all things that we should have righteous anger over. Jesus would have righteous anger over every single thing that was mentioned here. And if Jesus was going to have righteous anger over these systems, shouldn't we? Shouldn't we? You know, we have these wonderful ministries wonderful ministries, family promise, just one thing, the food bank, we do wonderful things, but these things are not done out of anger, they're done out of compassion, as it should be. But we don't address the system with family promise. It's a band-aid. So in closing, I would like to share that this story of Jesus in the temple, he is calling us into a very inconvenient truth. It is inconvenient for us to find the anger within, the righteous anger that is needed to address and change the system. It's a risk to do so. People don't like rebel rousers. If we have righteous anger over any one of these systems, we would be called rebel, rebel rousers. People do not like to be challenged People who are comfortable want, don't want to change their ways. People who have power do not want to give up their power. People who have more than another are not interested in raising up the lowly and pulling down the wealthy so that we can all be equal children of God. There is nothing convenient about being Jesus' disciple because spreading the gospel is the ultimate inconvenient truth. Amen. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full on his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his wonder and